Hello and welcome to episode three of Burning Questions. We've given Jason Bonington a, a week off after his absolute moral in Bonsell Benjamin just went under last week, so he's still recovering from that. But the good news is that we have two trainers joining us, as well as Tim O'Connor. Tim, thanks for jumping in. Thanks for having me, Nikita. Good to be here in um, cold Ballarat with, along with Michael Stanley. Now, Mick, I'm not sure. Fashion has been a, a bit of a thing the past couple of weeks with Andy Gath, but I think you've taken it to a new level this week. What are you wearing? Well, I'm disappointing uh, Jason and Andy weren't on because after their fashion uh, last week, I thought I'd better join in and chuck on, uh, you know, it's nice and balmy down in Ballarat, so I just chuck on one of my finest uh, snow jackets. And uh, glad to have with us this week as well, Josh Aiken, who plays has a bit pretty big hand in tomorrow night's Melton meeting. Thanks for uh, coming aboard, Josh. No worries, Nikita. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it looks good, Mick. Very Paris, middle of winter type stuff there. It's actually something you'd, you'd wear, and my inspiration came from you, mate. I think it's safe to say we got. I think you've got Andy Andy's jumper covered. That's not his best. That's not his finest hour. <laughs> it had a bit of SJ from Big Brother that jumper, didn't it? <laughs> We'll get stuck into uh, the first of the burning questions this week. Pat's beach storm. Um, everyone was in agreement last week that he was the class runner of the field and would be winning first up. That didn't happen. He did appear a little bit disappointing on face value. Tim, I'll start with you. Can he turn it around in just a week and uh, and take out the final this week? Well, I'm glad you got me on because I wasn't on this last week and I'm happy to buy my own trumpet here. I didn't think he was a moral last week and I actually tipped Santa Casa Beach on top. So... Um, I'm glad you've got me on to tell everybody how good I am there. Um, I don't think you can turn it around. I was, um, I think there's a stack of chances in this race. And, um, I mean, it's just a, it's a concern. I haven't seen any markets yet in terms of what price you'll come up, but, um, I couldn't have him on that last run. I mean, of course he can win the race, he's class, but, um, I think he's become a bit of a wait and see or watch and see prospect now for me. So, um, yeah, I've got a few of ahead, few ahead of him, and um, including Santa Casa Beach, who I reckon can repeat the dose in that um, in the fastest of those two heats. Mick, he did prove uh, or seem to be below his best. I think that the real Pat's Beach Storm uh, would have performed a little bit better than he did last week. Do you think that the horse can turn around that form in in just a week's time? Um, firstly, Tim blowing his own trumpet. Um, you know, that's something that uh, we're common with down here in Ballarat as the uh, old sport uh, footy hound. So it uh, doesn't surprise me at all, Timmy. Um, look, I, I don't think he will turn it around, to be honest. I, I sort of thought we spoke about last week, I thought he would just stroll around and win. But maybe looking back on it, you know, these three-year-olds that are lightly raced um, with the change of seasons coming in and racing, although it didn't look like a strong race on paper to a derby field, it may not have been, um, you know, ready to, to step into that. I think they've gone 152 something. And although he had a nice run, for a three year old that's lightly raced to step into open grade horses that are running in uh, metropolitan races week in, week out, maybe he might just take a couple at that tempo to really pick it up and, and hit his strap. So the inside second line draw, unless Kiss Me Elvis holds the lead, he's probably going to end up in the second half of the field or hedge his bets on the fence. So he might find it hard to win again again this week, but I wouldn't write him off. I think uh, he's too good a horse and, and Dave's too good a, a trainer and driver to, uh, you know, say when the, the Queensland derby comes around, he'll, um, he'll have him ready then, um, you know, regardless of what happens this week. Josh, you know David Moran quite well and uh, you would have seen this horse race plenty of times. What's your take on it from his uh, his effort last week? Can he turn it around from that sticky inside back row draw? Yeah, he's a gun horse, and um, I've been a, an admirer of his for a long time. I think, like Mick touched on, if if Dave's got Queensland in mind, it doesn't surprise me sort of that he was a little bit underdone last week. Um, he's probably got a pretty big, you know, three months to even six months to the end of the year. So Dave's a pretty smart trainer. He'll be timing this horse's run in terms of his campaign to perfection. But, yeah, just with his talent and ability, um, yeah, nothing, just with his talent and, and, and ability, nothing would surprise me with this horse. He's a really exceptional three-year-old. Um, but it is tough for these three-year-olds to sort of go in the deep end at Metro level straight away as well. Josh has given me flashbacks of the uh, neighbour from Tim the Toolman Taylor there with uh, just half the face. <laughs> 
the flashbacks where I forget his name, but uh, it's uh, that's oh, that's better. We uh, we can see eyes now, Josh. Just, it is just the stewards one. trying to call, they can wait. <laughs> it's uh, it is an interesting one. I personally wouldn't be surprised if he does um, come out and win this week or definitely puts in a, an improved performance, um, just given that we know he is a very, very good horse. But there's no doubt that he would need to improve on what he did last weekend. Second of our burning questions we have, there is uh, some very talented two-year-old fields that go around this weekend in the APG finals. And at this very early stage of their careers, a lot of them are only lightly raised. We'll start with you, Mick. What is it more important to have at this early stage to win a short course, course feature race like this, speed or strength? No, definitely strength. Because um, a lot of the two-year-olds at this time of the year run on uh, pure adrenaline because they're you know generally they're only second or third race start going into these races so i think you find in in a hotly run group one race generally the strongest horse wins so um and that's probably why i'm sort of forgiving fiamma a little bit in her heat um for running third because she got crossed at the start from barrier one and she over raced really badly so um she, although she might have looked a little bit disappointing the last hundred I sort of forgive her a little bit because, it, you know, over racing that bad, she probably was never going to let down when she got the gap. So from two, and interesting that Kate is, is stuck with Fiamo. She would have had a few choices, I'd imagine. So from two, she's not going to get held up. And we saw in her first start, she did sit outside the lead and was very impressive. So although a couple Irish Black Label and Pedalant and, and did look impressive, I, I think from the draw, Fiamma might be the strongest and she won't get held up. So that's why I was sort of stuck with her in that Phillies division. Mick, if you could take home with you a Colt and a Philly from the, those two-year-old races, have you got any, I'm guessing you may be saying Fiamma after what you've just told us, but is there a couple that you wouldn't mind joining your barn? I'll probably take all Emma Stewart's horses, to be honest. <laughs> they all look uh, They all look super. Um Look, at the couple of Irish Black Label, I think the way she raced long term um, might be the one with her breeding and that that I would take out of the fillies. Um, and then obviously Beach Villa, he, he, you know, he looks a carbon copy of Poster Boy Speed and he's just got a beautiful action and carries himself well. So, um, yeah, probably those two out of each division. Josh, are you going with uh, the speed horse for a two-year-old at this early stage or are you with Mick and do you think that strength is uh, is what they need so early in their careers? No, definitely strength. You know, people see the mile race as a as a sprint trip and a short trip, but you talk to anyone that races regularly at Menangle or in America and a genuine mile is an endurance race. It's a strength race. Um, so any sort of horse can sprint for 200, 400 metres and be quick, but you know, to to do it at both ends in a in a mile race, or even in, endure it through a, a um, genuine tempo in a mile race, you definitely need the strength. And I think the way our, our babies are bred now, a lot of them are bred to have high speed, but it's the ones that have that sort of bottom. That you know, when when the pressure cooker goes on, they're they're the ones fighting out the finish. And if you could only uh, pick one colt, one filly to join Team Aiken. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to fight Mickey. Read me mind. I I love that colt uh, Beach Villa. He's, he's awesome. And uh, I watched Irish Black Label win as well, and she's only a little filly, but um, like, like the fillies proved last year, like they don't they don't need size to um to be dominant, and she impressed me. So me and Mick might have to do a uh, paper scissors rock for those two. Well, I'll be joining both of you because <laughs> they're my two as well, uh, Beach Villa and Irish Black Label. Surprisingly, um, Beach Villa actually reminds me how he goes a little bit. Reminds me of his half brother, not poster boy, but born to rock and roll. I think he's very similar to him in in his action and how he moves. So um, there's no doubt that both of them have loads of, of talent and uh, Lauriston are in for another big season. Tim, speed or strength for the two-year-old fields? Well, I won't be disagreeing with the two uh, the two experts here and in Mick and Josh. So yeah, strength for sure for me. Um, and in terms of, I mean, I, I absolutely love that run of Irish Black Label. I was there at Ballarat um, with Mick. We sat in a, found a nice warm couch there to watch some of the races on that, that Thursday night. And I thought the run out wide making ground in the 26-5 last quarter, um, you know, that's just the run of a good horse. And, um, look, I know the, the race is going to be tricky for her on Saturday night drawing barrier 10, but I'm just going to take a chance with her. I just think she's the best horse. So, um 
Irish Black Label for me, and of course Beachville, you, you can't go past him. So I reckon we might need to take a little uh, four-seater ute down there with a float on the back and down to Cardigan and raid Emma Stewart Stables, I think. The third of our burning questions we have, and I'll start with you here, Josh, uh, because I'm very interested to hear what Mick has to say, but we will start with you. Race number eight, the three-year-old boys final, looks to have plenty of speed on paper. Now, we know it doesn't always pan out that way, but uh, plenty of the horses do like to lead and do have that gate speed. Uh, of course, we have Tasty Delight, Athena, Soho Bollinger and Captain Crusader drawn one to four. Um, who do you think is the leader, Josh? Uh, I... Yeah, just found out our, our bloke got a run, so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, Tasty Delight can hold up, but it won't be without, you know, some uh, some attackers. Um, if Acknow, the thing is, if, if Acknow had a drawn four or five, I would have said he would have crossed him easy, but it's just so much harder, as Mick can probably agree with, when a horse is drawn directly beside you to actually cross them. They just get that competitive nature, and um, it is that bit trickier. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping Tasty Delight holds up, but, you know, Ricky Alchin's horse looks like he's going to be able to slip into the running line there somewhere. People might think he'll go forward, but I think he'll be able to float out and get a spot and uh, find a nice spot. But um, I'd say Tasty Delight will be able to dig the toes up. And I'm also hoping that and being a bit optimistic as well. Mick, uh, over to you. You are drawn three with Soho Bollinger, who has showed plenty of gate speed in the past. Who do you think leads this one? Um, I think Josh has been way over optimistic because Tasty Delight is no chance of holding the front. So um, it's good that your bloke got a run and you're still going to get a nice run there, Josh. Don't worry about that. But Tasty Excellent. Delight's drawn very well in two group ones um, already in, in the New South Wales Breeders' Challenge where he got crossed by Bar and Banner and then in the New South Wales Derby, I think he drew three and he got crossed again and settled midfield. So I think from the one at um, Tabcourt Park, Melton, although he's got Blake Fitzpatrick on, I think the horses out wide are just, they've just got superior gate speed. Acknell, Soho Bollinger, Captain Crusader are just, their first 50 metres off the mobile is electric. So, as I said, I, I don't think Tasty Delight is any chance of, of holding up. And yeah, they'll they'll try their best, but I, I can't see Acknell with his blistering speed not, not getting across. So I think... Uh, He's the leader, and um, and then yeah, for personally for my bloke, I'll um, yeah, I'll have to come out for fifty to to um, to see if I can get a really good spot. But uh, yeah, I think Acnow gets across. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think Acnow's shown it time and time again, especially up at Menangle, that he has such good gate speed. And as Josh mentioned, it, it shows that there is uh, it is much easier to cross from out wide. But I still think from Barry too that. Uh, now is probably the the one to get across Tasty Delight, but yeah, I don't think Tasty Delight will be the uh, will be the leader um, in my map anyway. Sorry, Josh, but great to see that your horse are. Nah, it's get okay. <laughs> Always happen to be proven wrong. <laughs> Tim, how did you map race number eight? Yeah, I had Acknow going to the front. I I didn't have Tasty Delight. Um, I was actually um, jotting down notes whether Tasty Delight could actually hold the leaders back. That's the way I wasn't. Um, so I thought there was a slim chance that uh, possibly could even end up three about the pegs. Tasty delight. Captain Crusader um, absolutely flies too, doesn't he? So um, I've got Act now finding the top uh, and because of that winning the race, but I think there's a stack of chances. Um, I've got, I've had a stack of time, particularly the last three runs for Seb's choice. Just a quick word on that, Mick and Josh, have you, you've, you've seen this horse and driven against him. Um, he seems to have gone to a new level, like a ridiculous new level in the last three starts. Um, I'll go first then. Uh, Josh, he, he doesn't do anything overly flashy, Seb's choice, but he just grinds away. The other night when he sat outside my bloke, I put the speed on down the back to sort of wear him out. And, um, you know, I think the week before I had Acknow off the bit at the 400, although he, he kept coming at me. Now, I turned over and Michelle Phillips hadn't moved on Seb's choice and he put his head in front and he just stayed there. Like, he didn't have that killer punch, but every time we got close to him, he just kept putting his nose in front. So he just looks like a really good work ho workhorse, he does. So if they go blistering speed, the, the first 100, 150 metres, and Seb's choice just floats out and, and gets to the breeze at some stage, he can still win the race. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I've got a lot of time for this horse as well. And he's the thing that impressed me the most is just his manners. He's a, he's a real professional. Um, 
seems to relax when they need him to relax and when they press the button, he goes. And, uh, you know, a lot of trainers talk about a trip away and he had a trip down in Tasmania and just seems to have come back a really nice horse. And probably one, uh, as you see, towards the end of the year, we step up to the, the longer distance races. I think he'll come into his own. So the utmost respect for that horse. And, yeah, like Mick said, if the first 300 metres is electric and he's not working, uh, he can probably run a 1,200 metres off the back of not much early work and be pretty dangerous. Yeah, I think he's – what do you think, Nikita? I think he's um, – you know, if there's early speed, uh, he's the one I want to be on, um, you know, get, coming into if, – if the race turns into a bit of a, a slug first, he's definitely the one I want to be on. Oh, absolutely. You just cannot knock what he has done for his past couple of uh, wins and how he's gone about it. He's had to do it the hard way and he, he's really dug deep and, like Mick said, uh, shown a real workman – Horse uh, way about him, so I think he's in fantastic form, and uh, he will need things to go his way a little bit with uh, with the horses drawn inside him. But I definitely have him as a winning chance. The final of our four burning questions today, and uh, I'm very interested to uh, get everyone's take on this one. Honolulu Bay, uh, we know what an exciting horse he is at his best. Mick, we'll start off with you with this one. Um, this race for him on Saturday night, I think it's fair to say at his best, he's the class horse of the race. Um, but can we trust him to, to just come out and win this race? No, he can't because I tipped him <laughs> to win the uh, four-year-old Bonanza and Josh will agree, he was absolutely giggling on the bend, I reckon, and he just didn't let down. So for that fact, I'm potting him because he let me down on the night. But um, <laughs> No, nah, his best is brilliant, and I'm not too sure. Josh will touch on a little bit more whether he's a, a better front runner over the short distance to, to maybe the longer trip or if he gets caught out wide. But certainly when he's in front over the short trip, uh, he looks as, as good as any horse going around. I, I love the, his high cruising speed. So, um, But, yeah, there's definitely, you know, from looking afar from, from outside, Josh, I would think over the longer trip if he – if he doesn't um, get his own way, and that he, he's definitely vulnerable. Yeah, the, the circumstances on Saturday night will suit him. He's going to be able to find a helmet in the running line in a, not, not, a, not a very big field, an eight-horse field, and that will suit him. But just from a training point of view, it's it's very hard. We saw it with it just personally with Reactor now and then Honolulu Bay, and we're probably going to see a similar thing with Naratech Prince. These horses just flying through their grades you know, in under 10 starts. And they're going from being a three-year-old maiden to racing at nearly free-for-all level at Melton in a matter of 10, 11, 12 starts. And you just don't get that chance to season your horse or to teach them some ring craft along the way. Um, and so it's, it is really tricky. And like you, I'm looking at these three-year-olds this year where we're in May and, you know, our blokes are 74 rating and there's a tasty delight to an 87 rating. And by the end of the year, these horses are going to be at free-for-all level, expected to race, Max Delight, Lock and Verat, these kinds of horses. And to be honest, they're probably going to get sold to America. So our biggest problem with Honolulu Bay is he flew through his grades and you just don't get to season them. Um, but he's the sort of horse now if he's probably going to be drawn on the front end over the short and off a helmet over the middle distance. And if we can do that consistently and I can keep my cool in some of the races and be a bit patient, um, he'll, he'll, he'll have a future just because he has that exceptional ability. Just on his last start, Josh, he looked to, to be just travelling on the bend and then when you asked him, he just didn't really have anything. Was there anything post-race that uh, or any reason for that, um, for that seemingly disappointing performance on that occasion? Yeah, it was a bit of a trough rot for the stable. We had a 10-day period where the horses were a bit 50-50 and um, he came back with a bit of a viral infection. Uh, which we've treated and since he's returned to really a really good blood work. Um, but yeah, we've just that sort of time of year change of season where a few of the horses are a bit under the weather. Tim, what's your take on Honolulu Bay? Does he just come out and win this race on Saturday night? I think I think the original question was, uh, can he be trusted? Um, uh, sort of, but not fully, if that makes sense. And the other, your question to answer your, your last question there is, can he, will he win on Saturday? Yeah, I think he's a good thing on Saturday. Um, I know we'll get to some best bets later. I've I've gone a little bit exotic in my best bets. I've made him one of the legs of a three-leg multi. So, uh, yeah, I think he comes out. And, I mean, I think he's a much better horse than, than what he meets uh, on Saturday night. And as Josh said, I think the conditions and the race sort of suit him. So, yeah, I think he's a good thing on Saturday night. 
Well, Tim, we, uh, you've mentioned best bets, so we might as well find out this multi and I hope our punters have their pens ready because we are coming off the back of some very, very good form, but with Mick and Andy both tipping uh, value runners that, that got the job done in Yolanta and also Arden Voyager on Saturday night. So the, there's no pressure, but there is plenty of pressure, Tim. So kick us off. Well, I'll clear the stage for Mick with my bets because Mick needs a couple of minutes to talk about Yolanta. We didn't talk about him enough. Uh, better enough on radio so I'll, I'll clear the floor for him in a minute uh, my three-leg multi that I'm going to go with uh, race two I'm going to go with number nine cover of darkness first up from a spell this horse needs no introduction uh, super uh, young trotter on the um, on the first up uh, assignment on Saturday night I think um, a much better horse than than what he meets in that field I'll take uh, cover of darkness into one of David Aikens Max Delight I think race five number two Max Delight can go to the top and win again and another one from the Aiken camp as we spoke about num race 11 number eight Honolulu Bay um, I think that can bring up the three-leg multi so not sure what price you get I haven't seen any markets at the moment but um, let's hope we can knock those three over Josh, as we mentioned off, off the top of the show, you do have a, a pretty nice hand uh, driving-wise tomorrow night. Have you got a, a best bet or a value runner for us? Uh, best bet's probably that Kate Gath will drive a Group 1 winner. But my, <laughs> personally speaking, um, I think my best chance is um, Max Delight. He's just coming to his own. And you know, the last fortnight we've had since that last win, which, with no disrespect, was essentially like a bit of a sharpen up race for him. Um, He's just really come in and started hitting his straps the last fortnight. So he's my best chance, and he'll be driven with the utmost confidence. And I think my best value uh, drive-wise would be Elder Baron Crescent. She's just absolutely flying. She went up to Menangle, and probably we gave Jimmy uh, one instruction, just find a helmet. She's got good high speed, and he, he parked her out and still won. So <laughs> she's uh, – but that's, that's, that's Jimmy. But uh, she's just uh, improved again since that trip away to Menangle. Um, not sure what price she'll be. Definitely be, you know, over the $10 mark with Cover of Darkness probably being pretty short, but she's my best value bet. Now, Mick, it's all up to you. What have you got for us this week on the back of uh, your Atlanta beating the short price, price favourite last weekend? Well, I respond to Tim first because listening to Metro Spective the other day, it's quite clear that both Tim and Javon both had their house on Spellbound because they spoke about spellbound for 15 minutes why it should have won and forgot who actually won the race but i'll forgive him for that that's fine um i'm going <laughs> my best bet I, i'm sticking with the armor i think she can bounce back for the reasons what i said earlier um a lot of kate gas uh, has stuck with her and and would have had the choice of a few drives so i like the armor to win and then um if I'm going to tip any of my horses, I think Drain the Swamp uh, will improve greatly this week and um, he's good each way odds, so I'd, I'd play him uh, each way. It's, there's no doubt it's going to be a fantastic night of racing. My best comes up in race number four, the Phillies Consolation. Number four, Treasure Rainbow. I really liked how this filly hit the line and worked home in uh, both of the heats that she contested. She didn't have a whole heap go her way. It's, it's quite an even field. And I think she'll be able to uh, to work forward and she's going to take a lot of beatings. Probably not going to get a huge price for her, but uh, I think it definitely looks her race. She she's is no actually doubt. scratched to Nikita. I'm just, I'm just flicking through the field now. So she's scratched, so you might have to find a new one. Okay, I'll rethink that. And uh, lucky I'll be on top vision on Saturday night, Nick. So I'll uh, I will rethink <laughs> sorry, that. And sorry, Nikita. <laughs> the best bet. You could have just let that slide, Nick, but... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, that's okay. Unfortunately, she scratched because I did think it was her race to win. Yeah. Um, it is going to be a fantastic uh, weekend of racing, and it is a shame that we cannot have uh, crowds on course. Um, we've heard from the government today, and uh, we are going through a lockdown. But make sure you tune in to Trot's Vision because we will have wall-to-wall -wall coverage, interviews, um, and all the action there. So you can uh, can sit home and enjoy that from, from the comfort of your lounge room. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Mick, for joining us today. And uh, hopefully Bon will be recovered by next week and uh, we'll be back for episode four of Burning Questions.